please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? On October the 10th, there was an article released by Dexter 2. They tweeted it out by saying viral TikToker Lieutenant Dan survived Hurricane Milton in his 20-foot boat after refusing to evacuate. Now he's been offered a new $100,000 boat and a kick deal by Aiden Ross. The article included tells us a little bit about him at this point anyway. Hurricane Milton was quite large. Yeah, a bit on the big side. Yes. Now it made landfall on the eastern coast of Florida on the 9th of October. Social media was unironically flooded with people attempting to brave the storm. Lieutenant Dan had gone viral over social media because, well, he did stay on his boat, which was quite something. He initially went viral because of an interview with Terence Concannon, yes, where he explained why he decided to stay, saying, I'm in good shape, I'm not sweating it, we got it set up the right way, we know what we're doing, if you're on land you're risking drowning. I'm on a boat, the boat will go up with the water. I'm going to play some of that video with that interview now, because this got the internet very much on Lieutenant Dan's side. If you're wondering why, by the way, he's called Lieutenant Dan, it's because he's missing a leg. All right, Dan, the people that are new, explain to them why you're deciding to stick out a Category 5, one of the worst hurricanes in Tampa history, out on a 20-foot sailboat in Tampa Harbor. told me to come out here and get a boat. I came out here and got a boat. And everything that he's been telling me over the last two days is I'm doing the right thing. He's got my back. I'm in good shape. I ain't sweating it. As somebody that does not have what you call faith, I find this idea of placing it in somebody else or something else to be a challenge to rationalize, okay? I'm not going to dunk on it. The guy survived. I just find it strange to place faith in something else because this is your test? Uh, I, I don't get it. Also, I'm inserting this commentary because fair use exists. Um, we're gonna ride this one out. We got set up the way we know what we're doing. And as long as the word just keeps rising, we'll be fine. Will you be wearing a life jacket? Hell no. <laughs> Are you gonna be able to swim if it, if it need be? In circles. <laughs> can you swim with one leg or what? Yeah, I can float like a damn champ, but swimming I just go in circles. So the plan is just to stick it out here? Yeah, I mean, the water's going to come in, it's going to rise. If you're on land, it's going to flood, you're risking drowning. I'm in a boat. The boat goes up with the water. So even if the boat goes up 100 feet in the air, I'm going to be up 100 feet in the air with the water. So it's really the safest place in the world to be is on my boat, and I got room for one more female. We're going to leave that last comment as foreshadowing, okay? Because there may well be some consequences here. Now, after that video went viral, there were discussions because people were concerned for him. It was believed that the storm surges would have been up to 15 feet, flooding much of the area Dan is located in. Tampa police and many others had tried to get him to leave his boat behind. He was hesitant to do so because it was all he owned. On the 8th of October, during a TikTok live, he had said that if someone helped him find a place to stay, he would be willing to leave his boat to ensure his safety. Eventually, the Tampa police, the chief especially, managed to convince him to abandon the ship, video of which was shared to Twitter by Proud Army Brat. Now everyone on the internet loves a plucky go-getter, there's also a humanitarian aspect. People were very much, at this point, on his side. They wanted to help him improve his life, right? So he was, in fact, verbally made an offer. As the Dexter 2 article we mentioned stated, he was offered a large sum of money, 
a boat, a kick deal. Because let's face it here, he could make good money on TikTok, of course he could. However, the TikTok economy is very much you rise and the moment you fall, you never rise again. And it's quick. Kick is newer, the money could be greater. Could be. Also, if you're offered six figures for a new boat, so you can live a better quality of life and live stream, well, I'd take the deal to be honest. Not even a joke. If you're offered a reasonable amount of money, take it. We're not young enough anymore. One man in question, Lieutenant Dan, is, well, he was born in 1970. He's not young, so take the money when an opportunity arises, right? Okay. Well, people did a little digging on this man, and they posted screenshots. Screenshots in question included a number of mug shots. These mug shots. Now, over time, you can see him getting a bit older, of course, but this is a lot of mug shots, and they paint a picture, don't they? As you can see, the majority come from Palm Beach. Some use this as a reason to paint him as a PDF. Others took the initiative and went and had a little look. The majority of them are boat charges for his tags and his docking, and traffic charges except for in Boward, and I do not know if that's the correct pronunciation, I do apologise, where he got one for drug paraphernalia and a possession charge, where he pled no contest. It was done before marijuana was legal in Florida and is not a felony charge. Now how this all began, it is believed, courtesy of someone called Bitch Evaporate, was a TikTok user did some digging, who they have dubbed a liberal white lady, and I'm going to play that video here. First off, this man has a GoFundMe with over $20,000 in it. He's not homeless, period. He lives on a boat, except for the short year that he spent in prison for beating a EMT with a violin. His GoFundMe is under a different name than the one that he's using in the daily press and the one that he was arrested in. So it's really hard to tell who exactly he is. But what I have found is that his Facebook page lists himself as a digital creator. That's right, a digital creator. I love these internet sleuths because they find so much information, which is always great, but they only ever tell you the worst bits and use the rest to paint the picture, to leave it vague and nebulous enough that you assert, assume, presume. Don't you love that? One of the reasons I love doing Halls of Injustice crime content here is because I get to go through all the charges and tell you which ones are the ones they're going to focus on based on the evidence they have to hand. I'm going to carry on with your video though because I want some more information. I think we all need it. Context is key here and context always matters. He lives in Palm Beach. Knowing that there was going to be a storm, he anchored himself to the worst place in all of Tampa the worst place. From where he anchored, there are four marinas. The Hillsborough River, a short jaunt, like literally not even 700 feet from where he's anchored, would have been a safer location to put his boat. He was offered hotels. He was offered homes. He has clearly made $20,000 in a GoFundMe. All of this for internet clout. I'm starting to understand why you've got a bit of negativity here. Backlash, that is. You are asserting that he did this for clout. We can never be certain of it because you are not providing proof of it. You are just stating it. I'm going to dismiss the assertion on the grounds that you cannot verify that at all at this point. It's also worth pointing out that where you saw most of his criminal charges, he clearly has a soft spot and is a creature of habit. And at this stage of his life, he has zero Fs to give. Meantime, there are people who are homeless in Tampa and St. Pete. Clearwater area. There are people who are infirm, who are gravely ill, who have no cars, who cannot leave, who do not have options, and those people have my sympathies. Those are the people that deserve our sympathy. Not people who have decided that they want to chase cloud on the internet. Not people who have $20,000 in a GoFundMe that they started three weeks ago. Not people who came to Tampa to make a point not people who chase internet fame. Now I hope by playing that video you understood why this person may well have gotten a fair amount of backlash for her commentary. All of it coming from a place of looking down upon another person with no evidence to support what she says. It's not a great look really, is it? But it was enough of a look that it got other people to talk, to do their digging, to make their own minds up, okay? Because of the criminal record, the most notable of which came courtesy of Aidan Ross. We have a clip from that from his live stream anyway, where he talks about this. I don't care, everyone's innocent until proven guilty, first of all. Second of all, I'm allegedly alleged for a lot of shit, bro. Like, look at me, bro. Like, people think I'm the worst human being of all time. People wanna kill me, bro. All these trainees wanna kill me. 
bro. Like, I'm gonna be real with you guys, bro. Like, I don't give a like until like I see some facts and proof. It only to me, bro. Like, I don't care. On the face of it, you think that means then that he's fully on the side of Lieutenant Dan, right? But that's not what's happened. For that, we go to Twitter. Aiden Ross had tweeted out that video, by the way. Just thought I'd include that part. We're going to go to Fear Buck. Lieutenant Dan is upset after being told that Aiden Ross and Kick are no longer giving him a $100,000 boat and a kick deal after they found out about his history which includes assaulting a woman and a police officer. Aiden Ross's tweet, where the video is included, said, I said this right after the clip where I reacted to Lieutenant Dan. I never said I was taking the offer deal boat away. The internet loves to make me look bad. Here is a clip from Lieutenant Dan's conversation. Tell about Aiden Ross telling you, you he not getting you a boat no more. He came to me. I never went to him. He offered it to me. I never asked for it. So then he turned around and he started saying about my history. Well, you should have did that before you made the offer. You know, if you're worried about your image and who you have working for you, you should have done your due diligence and looked me up before you made me an offer of $100,000 sign-on bonus $50,000 a month with a $100,000 boat. And I'm going to let you go because I don't care about that. This is where there's a valid point. A really good one about optics, especially. If the offer was made and they hadn't vetted him first, they're in a pickle. The pickle is, if they don't honour the deal, they're seen as those that renege on deals. That harms your credibility when you make deals in the future. If you do honour the deal, people will run with it as, well, you're toxic and therefore you're fueling further toxicity. It takes a critical mind to actually bother to look at what the charges are and what he was done for what time he served, and why. Some of which he does explain in this video. We'll skip to that now. So what about your history that discussed him so bad? Because we all got a history, nobody closet clean. I, I went to prison, I did jail time, but I had to tell you point blank God to my soul. I'm innocent of all the charges. I was charged with battery on a law enforcement officer. He said I punched him in the nose. Mm. I never even saw the cop. Mm -mm. He beat the hell of him out of me from behind. And then I went to prison for a year and a day on a battery on a Leo charge. And I never even saw him. But the thing is this, you were karma and God are real. Because the bartender who started it all, the manager and the arresting officer were all the witnesses. While I went to prison for five and a half months, the 44 year old bartender had a massive heart attack in his sleep and died. Oh my God. The cop who was a street cop that used to wear the sheriff thing across his chest and had the gun and the boots and you know, you know, the military. Mm -hmm. He's now behind a desk at the substation in, West, in Lake Worth. So that when you walk in, he's like, how can I help you? You know, tell me that ain't a demotion. Right. You know, and on top of that, he looks like he's got cancer. Now we could sit here all day and discuss the fact he has served time for charges that he has been found guilty of. He claims innocence and he believes karma has delivered him some form of justice via one passing away and the officer being demoted. We're not going to. He has said his piece and we're going to leave it at that. As far as I'm concerned, I'm more interested to know whether or not this deal could still happen. Because now you know more about the charges he has from those mugshots. We know what he isn't and we know what he is. Some will say that he will disappear from the internet quickly because two minutes of fame, that's how TikTok operates. It's not 15 minutes, it's two. Because you really are a splash of water within an ocean of talent. The word talent, though, is ironically used when you use it in connection with TikTok. There's a whole wing for that. They're called hipsters. I don't believe Dan here, Lieutenant Dan, is one of them. I'm intrigued to see what happens next, because I'd like to see whether or not Aiden Ross will still honour his side of the deal, although since the recent tweet that I mentioned, he hasn't said anything on Twitter. He's very active on Kick, and I don't watch Kick. I did see a stream on Cogsworld last night. He was talking about it all. There's quite a lot to go through. I highly recommend if you want to watch, uh, you click the link in the pinned comment to Cog's stream. Just one more thing, because I have no doubt I'm going to have to do a follow-up video on Monday concerning who I'm now about to mention. At least he's handling, Dan that is, the situation better than that of Jack Doherty, who after crashing his $200,000 car is on TikTok begging for money. Monday's going to be very interesting if he's still at that. I'm going to have to look him up and actually bother to pay attention and clip the feck out of him. I was considering making a video on someone called Luna, who I think is one hell of a lolcow on TikTok. Possibly a fraudster, yes. Anyway, 
As a final thing, I'm going to be streaming a political recap stream, not on Moisky Live anymore. It's moving to Rumble, because I got a community warning for an old political video done by somebody else for me in 2016. I got a community warning on Moisky Live. I'm not risking that channel. That channel will be repurposed and will feature whiskey streams, log cow streams, possibly some gaming as well. I'll link Rumble down below if you're interested in joining. Hope to see you there. If not, thank you for listening and have a wonderful weekend.